Good morning, good morning. How's everybody this morning? Has everybody gotten a little something to eat? I hope. My name is Sam Wheeler. I'm the chair of the board of directors for High Country Humane, and I want to welcome you to our annual Pause to Give Thanks event. It is so gratifying to see so many supporters of High Country Humane here today. We have so many dignitaries here that I would likely miss someone, so I won't even try, but it's so nice to have you here. And in my opinion, everybody's a dignitary who's here, so thank you so much. Give yourself a round of applause. I'd also like to uh, recognize our amazing board, our team from High Country Humane. So would uh, the team, the, all the employees of High Country Humane, please stand and be recognized. This is the hardest group of working people I've ever met in my life. And I'd also like to recognize our board of directors. Would everyone who is on the board of directors for High Country Humane please stand? Thank you. There's about 16 of us now and growing. Uh, we're taking over Flagstaff here, I think, in a matter of time. I've been involved with this amazing organization since its inception. I can tell you I've never seen such passion, love, and commitment to an organization as this group of wonderful people. They come to, to work every single day trying to improve the lives of animals and families in our community. Please give them a round of applause. That's our staff, thank you. I'd also like to recognize our executive director, Liz Olson. What an exceptional leader. She literally has built this organization from the ground up with a passion and conviction unparalleled in the industry. She is constantly looking at best practices and system improvements to better serve our animals, staff, and the communities we serve. So Liz, thank you for being with us. <laughs> Lastly, I want to recognize our partners, uh, City of Flagstaff and Coconino County. We have uh, built a partnership together on this journey, and we are trying to make this one of the finest shelters in the country, which I think we're on our way to do. This last spring, we hosted Dr. Stephen Hansen and members of the Board of Directors from Arizona Humane Society of Phoenix. AHHS is one of the premier shelters in the nation. They were here to look at and evaluate our program. They told us it is amazing how far we have come in such a short time and that we should celebrate the program we have built in Flagstaff and Coconino County. So that was quite a coup for us and we have been, they've kind of been our mentor to watch how we're growing and make sure that we're not missing anything in our process. During the course of the morning, you will hear about the large number of animals we care for, our wonderful fosters who we could not exist without, and some of our most important needs moving forward. We are at a tipping point. If we could find a benefactor, we could build some indoor-outdoor kennels, buy a couple of containers that will free up a garage that can then be converted into a much-needed isolation ward, to keep disease out of the rest of the shelter. We can take the shelter to the next level, and we're hoping to do that this next year. So without further ado, let's get the program started. And the next speaker this morning is our own Liz Olson. Liz, please come on up. Hello, hello, good morning, and thank you for the really warm welcome, Sam. Um, I want to give a special thank you to Coconino Community College for hosting us at this lovely venue, and uh, Toyota, who is our title sponsor. Thank you. <laughs> and to all of you here today, I know it's an early morning <laughs> before your work days, and I just really appreciate um, seeing you, and if I haven't met you, hello, and I look forward to that, so welcome. I'm honored to be able to speak at this year's Pause to Give Thanks. Uh, this is the third year in a row that we have hosted this event, and it is a really unique opportunity to be able to share the incredible work being done at High Country Humane um, in a different light. Um, I've been with High Country Humane for four years, and as we wrap up our fifth year of operation, I look back on the years we have spent building one of the top animal welfare organizations in our state. There are five years of daily intakes, reuniting pets with family members, pet adoptions, fostering experiences, community events, spay and neuter clinics, 
on and on, <laughs> vaccine clinics, <laughs> vet appointments, food banks, and really so much more. It's hard to describe how five years now feels like a lifetime, but it certainly does. Uh, the work is filled with a lot of passion and such a sense of purpose. Every single day is full of new opportunities to step outside of ourselves and into the role of caring for others, uh, people, and animals. When working with animals, we know it's essential to create routine, something that the animals can rely on. So every single day, they know that we're going to be there and what they're going to get fed and when and how we clean. All of our methods are based on research and best practices and uh, focused on how animals see the world. We um, ask ourselves daily how we can see the world through their eyes, how we can feel what they feel um, and understand one another, even though we speak such a different language. Working with animals is so unique. Animal welfare is not just about providing uh, roof, food, and water for animals anymore. We have learned through years of research um, as an animal welfare community that it's a lot more than that now. At High Country Humane, we treat each animal as an individual and consider their specific needs. This is only possible through the incredibly hard work of our entire team every day, 365 days a year. In these moments of reflection and celebration, I know there's a lot more to come. Sustaining this level of care um, at the rate at which we're providing it means we need to do more. We know we need more housing, like Sam mentioned, more programs, and more staff. In 2024, we are hoping to add a development director, a grant writer, a lost and found coordinator, and a vet care technician to manage these increasing intake numbers that we're seeing. Because this year, we're likely to see about 500 more animals walk through our doors than last year. And this is something we're taking really seriously. Animal welfare across the country is still seeing numbers and euthanasia rates increase after COVID. That's very common now. Um, but High Country Humane, even though we have not been immune to these challenges, because we have had them, um, we are really proud to say that we have remained at an over 97% live release rate for five years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is only possible due to the endless hard work of our staff of over 35 staff members, 150 active volunteers, 900 foster families for more than 2,000 animals a year. And they are vital along with all of the community partners that we have. The shelter has welcomed over 3,200 animals this year. 50% uh, of them are unwanted puppies and kittens. There's about another 1,000 stray dogs, cats, and small critters um, who are never reunited with their owners. Their stories are lost in time. And then there are other lucky ones, about 500, 550 or so, um, find their owners and go home after just a few days. With the Lost and Found Coordinator, we are really hoping to increase those return to owner numbers. So as the cup is slowly emptied every day, <laughs> it's refilled again and again. Um, this has been one of the most challenging yet rewarding uh, years in my career life. Um, I want to share how proud I am to be a part of the organization and how important I feel the work is, um, how vital it is to our community <laughs> and the lives of the animals being saved in our care. There really is no better place for an animal to be while on their journey home. Uh, thank you for being here and caring and for helping us make the world a better place for animals in the city of Flagstaff and Coconino County and really truly far beyond. Together we create such a brighter future for them and uh, we're really thankful for that. So <laughs> I tried to get through it. <laughs> so thank you. Um, I wanted to share, although with our glare and I'm so sorry for that, I hope you can see our video because um, next is a look inside this past year at High Country Humane uh, with a video from us called Unlocking Hope, Our Journey. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to Perfect Match, where a lucky member from the audience gets to meet a cuddly friend who's looking for their forever home. This is Cider. She enjoys multiple nose boobs, 
the rubbing of her toe beans, and also Russian literature. This is Sawyer. His dislikes include baths, thunderstorms, and vacuums. Shadow's ideal date would be a cuddly blanket, Netflix, and chin scratches. Do you want chin scratches? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, sure, sure, sure. High Country Humane is the city of Flagstaff's and Coconino County's contract shelter. Our coverage area extends over 18,000 square miles, not only Flagstaff, but also Tuba City, Winslow, Williams, Holbrook, and even the Grand Canyon. When we first opened five years ago, we took in 2,800 animals. Last year, that number grew to 3,200. We reunited 589 of those pets with their families and helped 2,188 find their forever homes. We have two amazing veterinarians who do a tremendous amount of work. This little kitten just woke up from her spay surgery. Every Monday is our low cost spay and neuter clinic. And last year we performed 336 for the public and 1,838 for the shelter animals. The first Saturday of every month, we hold our low cost vaccine clinic. Last year, we administered 771 vaccines to the public and 9,657 vaccines in the shelter. We try to reduce surrenders by assisting with pet food. This is our food bank. Every fourth Saturday of the month, we donate tons of food to families in need. Every single week, we hold pet adoption events. The work is rewarding and meaningful, but it also comes with challenges. So this girl came from Tuba City yesterday. She came in with about an eight week old puppy, a single puppy. Um, and we immediately noticed that she's got a broken hind leg that's pretty infected already. It's an open fracture. Um, unfortunately, it's a really old fracture and it's really infected. So the only cure is gonna be amputation. We've been able to weather COVID and catastrophic wildfires that have threatened our shelter, but we need to grow our budget to match the growth of our community. Our expenses in 2022 came out to about $1.8 million, but our contract only covered half. That means we need to raise at least a million dollars to continue providing the same level of care to our community. We are continuously beyond capacity. We have dogs and cats in all of our offices. <laughs> we have guinea pigs in our break room. This is a maintenance closet that we had to turn into a cat room. We even have bunnies in the bathroom. We're raising money for indoor outdoor kennels so we can provide better enrichment for our animals. We need help repairing our fencing. For example, we have a cinder block blocking a hole that a dog dug. Every single month, we move thousands of pounds of food. If we had a forklift, that would alleviate a lot of time, energy, and backbreaking work on our staff and volunteers. We would like to create a puppy adoption area that is no longer in the lobby. We're also hoping to build a much needed medical isolation area. Every donation, no matter the size, makes a significant impact. A $100 donation would be enough to cover fixing a stray pet and provide vaccinations for two others. High Country Humane wants to extend our heartfelt gratitude for your support. Every adoption, every foster home, and every donation is a lifeline for these animals, bringing them one step closer to their forever homes. Together, we're not just saving lives, we're building a stronger, more compassionate community. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for making a difference. Side effects of donating to High Country Humane may include an influx of warm and fuzzies, uncontrollable baby talk. How about this fuzzy one? Who's this? Yes. Yes. And an overwhelming sense of fulfillment and community. If these side effects last longer than four hours, congratulations. Good morning. <laughs> I'm Dr. Carly Bennett. Most of you know me already. <laughs> um, thank you. I'm also going to try and get through this without crying. Thanks, Liz. <laughs> um, I have been living my dream being High Country Humane Shelter Vet for the last four and a half years, almost five. 
I am so proud to be a part of this an amazing organization that values our community and its animals. I fell in love with this community when I came to Flagstaff in 2004 to attend NAU. I knew I wanted to come back after vet school to help the animals and their people. I was very excited when High Country Humane was able to welcome Dr. Katie Green this year to offer low-cost vet care to those who need it. Unfortunately, Dr. Green is currently hiking have a soup eye and cannot join us today to tell you how much she loves being part of the High Country Humane team. Um, this year, High Country Humane has been able to offer low cost medical appointments to clients who cannot afford regular vet care. This often means that animals are able to stay in their loving home instead of needing to be rehomed or relinquished due to cost barriers. We are able to provide long term care for clients for. So hold on. For clients who qualify for our low cost program so that they do not have to give up on family members in need. My passion is spay neuter. <laughs> it's the whole reason I'm here. <laughs> With Dr. Green on board, I can now help High Country Humane offer public low cost spay neuter appointments. With me every Monday. Yay. <laughs> spay neuter saves countless lives and is necessary for population control in Coconino County. You heard the numbers in our video. I want nothing more than to continue my spay neuter work in Coconino County. With four surgery days a week, I'm continuing my goal to spay them all. <laughs> I am also very proud of our ever growing trap neuter release program. It brings me so much joy to help our community cats live longer, healthier lives. We are able to provide 12 TNR slots a week to help manage our community cat population. Thank you all for being here today and all the support so that we can continue to offer all these great programs at High Country Humane. We could not do this life-changing work without you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Motion Olson. Thank you, Liz, for asking me to speak today. I'm honored to be here. Um, Today I stand before you not as a dog owner, but as a proud, not just as a dog owner, but as a proud foster dog dad at High Country. My journey is marked by cold noses, wagging tails, lots of dog hair, and long walks in the forest. See, I've owned dogs all my life and I thought I had it all figured out, from understanding every curious look to teaching new commands and even training with hand signals. It reminds me of something I read once by Carolyn Knapp, author and columnist who said, before you get a dog, you can't quite imagine what living with one might be like. Afterward, you can't imagine living any other way. Around March of this year, I bumped into Liz Olson at an event. Liz, with her infectious enthusiasm for everything canine, asked if I'd ever considered fostering. And until then, I hadn't. But the idea definitely intrigued me. I saw it as an opportunity to, get, to give Callie, my two-year-old Aussie cattle dog, and High Country Rescue a playmate. And more importantly, it was an opportunity to make a difference. So I jumped in with a curious heart and a willing spirit. I remember telling Callie, which is kind of hilarious since she's deaf, um, she was about to get a new friend, but a temporary one. And I used the word temporary loosely, as each dog I fostered, be it Nitro, Remy, Charles, Maxine, Dewey, or Hopper, those critters right there, have all left a permanent paw print on my heart. I waggishly told each one of them, don't get too comfortable, you're not staying. But understand, that was mostly for me. These dogs have brought a unique joy to my life. Nitro with his boundless energy, Remy, the gentle giant who could stand on two legs to give hugs, Charles who wagged his little butt when he walked, Maxine who was so loyal and responsive, two taps and she was by my side. Dewey, my little goofball, generous with her licks, and Hopper, who once he came out of his shell, lived up to his name in every sense of the word. People have asked me if I get attached to the dogs I foster. And yes, of course I do. I'm a dog lover, that's why I do this. But it's not about me, it's about the dog. And not just each dog, but all dogs. They all deserve a warm bed, a full belly, and a happy place to curl up with their person. I remember the first time I heard the phrase, foster failure. I see it differently. Any time a dog gets into home is a win. Since I started fostering, we found homes for all six dogs. The last one, Hopper, just this past weekend. 
And while I've only had them for a short time, I've loved them like they were my very own. There's nothing quite like the feeling of playing a key role in finding these pups a loving home. It's a cocktail of emotions, actually. Joy, satisfaction, and a smidgen of sadness. But the joy is the most potent ingredient. In closing, I want to stress the difference fostering has made, not just to the dogs I've had, but to me personally. Fostering is a journey filled with joyful triumphs, the occasional argument over a bone, and heartwarming memories. I've grown as a dog owner and as a person. The experience has deepened my understanding of unconditional love and made my life richer. It's not just about making room at the shelter. It's about finding these precious animals a forever home. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart for your generous contributions to the shelter. Because of you, more tails get to wag, more dogs get to play, and more lives get to change for the better, both canine and human. I'll go and get my next foster pup soon, definitely. Because like Ms. Knapp said, I can't imagine living any other way. Thank you. So good morning. How's everybody doing? These are all great stories and, and tough acts to follow. I'm Jeff Kennedy. Um, I just It's a privilege to be here, and I'm honored that, that Liz asked me to come up and, and speak and help in this program. And I want to I wanna go off script, because as, as I look out, and I was kind of watching everyone this morning as you came in, it's like we all have this common thing. We love our pets. You know, we have learned from our pets, hopefully, how to love and engage in our community. And so I want to ask a couple questions before we get started. So how many of you out there, because I'm assuming everyone is a pet owner, right? So how many of you are single species households, meaning that you have either one dog, one cat, one horse, or whatever? So how many of you are single species households? Okay, very good. Very good. How many of you are... Uh, the rest of you, obviously, raise your hands, multiple species households. Okay, so for, for those of you who are just single species households, then you know that, like having like one child, that one pet pretty much sucks up all the energy in the room, right? They get, they get all the love, all the pets, all the attention, and that's a great thing. So, my story goes like this. I've had, I've had dogs, sometimes one, sometimes multiple, most of my life since I was a kid. And all of them were my favorite dog, okay? From Sputnik when I was a little kid, which was a little miniature poodle. Rome, which was a Alaskan Malmute when I was in high school that just ran and made me chase him all over the neighborhood. Stone, was an oversized mutant Doberman Pinscher that I had when I was in college, and he wouldn't let anyone else ride in the front seat of my car. Then I had Sugar, which was a rescue pit bull that just loved to sit next to me on the couch and give me licks all over the face. So my most recent companion, her name is Sunday, and I didn't so much adopt her as she adopted me. I walked in on one of those adoption events, and I was like, I was on my way to lunch, and I'm thinking like, oh, they're having one of these adoption events. I'll just stop in. And there was this little pit bull, beagle, something, boxer, mix, dog, that when I walked in, she was just curled up in the corner, and when I walked up to the cage, she stood up and put her nose in the cage, and as I reached down, she put her paw up. So I, so I called my wife, and, and she, was, she was coming by for lunch, and we didn't have a dog, and my wife had never had a dog, and so I'm like, how am I going to approach this? So we were walking to lunch. You guys are going to love this, and I'm like, hey, honey, my wife's name is Rebecca. I'm like, I met someone that I'd like you to meet. <laughs> so we walk in, and there's this dog. Her name was Faith at the time. We renamed her Sunday, but uh, so I introduced faith to my wife, and then I went back to work. Well, I didn't know. So I, my wife's like, well, I got a bunch of errands to run. She stayed there, and she took her out of the cage, and she walked her around, and the next thing I know, she, she's like, hey, I want to adopt this dog. 
So I'm like, great, this is, this is working out exactly like I planned but didn't plan. So anyway, we adopt faith. We adopt faith. And then we're like, now what are we going to do? Because our middle son, he said that if we ever got a dog, he was going to name her, him, whatever, Paco Sinbad. Well, I didn't want a Paco Sinbad. So I'm like, honey, we got to do something. We have to rename the dog so that they think that she's already had a name. It's like, well, we don't really like faith. So we renamed her Sunday. I'm a pastor. So like we, we renamed her Sunday. and We introduced her to the dog. Well, our youngest, she came out of the room and she has the opposite reaction to everything. So she walks out of her bedroom, and she sees Sunday, and she bursts out in tears. And we're like, what's going on? She's like, I'm so happy. So anyway, the end of that story is over the last 10 years or so, we've had the privilege of being loved by Sunday. And what my children have learned was how to be unselfish, how to care for something other than themselves, how to uh, recognize the needs of our four-legged companion, Sunday. And it's a wonderful story. And Sunday's a little older now, and we're convinced that she's uh, suffering from maybe some cognitive decline. My kids call it dogmentia. And um, I don't know. She's not as patient as she used to be. She used to just wait patiently while we fed her. Now she barks like she's mad at us. She yells at us all the time. But... We love her so much, and a middle son, the one who wanted to name her Paco Sinbad, whenever he's over, he's like, has the lady been taken for a walk? He calls her the lady now. <laughs> has my little lady been taken for a walk? I'm like, yes. Well, I'm going to take her for a walk. And, and as I have just watched these young kids grow up into people that are able to recognize the need of uh, not a voiceless, but certainly a, a silent creature that can't necessarily just tell you what they want. And I'm sure that they are going to be able to care for their community, for each and every one of you, for the elderly, for the people who, uh, you know, that need help, that need maybe their driveway swept because they're too old to do it themselves to get the, the snow out. And I've watched these kids learn how to serve their community by serving Sunday. So I wanted to share that with you because I am sure that all of us have somewhat of a similar experience. And we're able to do this because our loving pets teach us how to love, one, love unconditionally. Amen? So we've reached that point in the program where you get an opportunity now to show your appreciation for everything that High Country Humane does, what they represent, the love of our community, taking care of animals in our community that couldn't care for themselves, and you get an opportunity to give a little bit of that back. Um, they work tirelessly towards changing the lives of animals and people in the city of Flagstaff. And so uh, I want to give High Country Humane applause. Thank you. Thank you. I want you to give yourself applause for caring for the pets that you do. Amen. So, how can you make a difference? How can you make a difference? I just, if you don't mind, uh, I like interactive. So, let's all together, on the count of three, how can I make a difference? So, can you do that with me? Will you indulge, indulge me for just a second? Okay, one, two, three, how can I make a difference? That was pathetic. Wow. All right. So here's the thing. I can do this for a while, okay? So, so let's do better so that we can move on. Is that fair? All right. So one, two, three. How can I make a difference? Well, financial support is the number one way that you can help out. You can, and your financial support will help to provide essential resources, funding specific projects, or sustaining the ongoing programs of High Country Humane, and there is no amount that's too small. So I'm hoping, as I look around the room, that all of us here will just make a commitment right now before I move on that we can contribute something, even if it's just a small amount. Can we agree to that? Okay. It's getting a little, that side of the room is doing really good. 
Can we make that commitment? Love you guys. Love you guys. You're going to get tired of me soon. Hey, listen, here, why don't we do it this way? The sooner we can all get on the same page, the sooner I'll be done and I can stop lecturing you. How about that? Okay, I like it. All right, so there's a number of ways that you can do it to, to, to make a gift. You can complete the pledge card. I think there's several of them on the table. Credit care, check, or cash. And they also, uh, we will collect these for entry. Uh, you can also text to give, image text, to give on screen, right? Somewhere, there you go. Um, or you can also use your phone camera to just scan the QR code, um, and there should be several of these on the table. Everybody have one of these or access to it? See you guys with your phones out. They make it so easy anymore, huh? There's a lot of other exciting opportunities to support High Country Humane as well. And uh, I'm going to just give you a few minutes as you decide which way you're going to give, whether or not it's going to be the pledge card, whether you're going to text or scan the QR code. Uh, I already know that everyone's going to, including me, when I get back to the table because we've made that commitment to one another, right? And so I, I, I want you to be your own accountability partner right now. The other ways that you can support High Country Humane are through corporate partnerships. If you represent a company, we want you to consider partnering with us. And corporate support can make a significant impact on our work, and it's mutually beneficial way to give back to the community. I like what I'm seeing here. Everybody's kind of busy doing something. You can also do in-kind donations. Uh, the, the power of in-kind donations with uh, helping to give supplies, equipment, and other resources can also go a long way towards achieving our goals. And remember, your contribution isn't just a donation, folks. It's an investment in a brighter future for our community and the world. I highlighted this because it was worded so well. Every act of kindness and support adds up and creates a ripple effect of positive change. So, no times are tough. I know they are. Any amount is welcome. There's no amount that's too small. It'll all go for a really good, really good use, for a really great cause. And listen, if, if nothing else, if nothing else, and I want to leave you with this, and believe me, I could and do preach this all the time. I'm not here to preach to you, but I am here to remind you that when we think about how the world moves, how the universe moves, when we think about all of the things happening around our world, do you know that the easiest thing to give and the most important thing to give is compassion and mercy? And honestly, if we would start there, then we get empathy. Empathy leads to understanding. Empathy and understanding leads to action. And we could all, from where you sit right now, make a positive difference, not just in our homes, it starts there, but in our community, our neighborhood, our city, our nation, our world. And I think that's an obligation that we all have. So I would like to see, with everyone here, your goodness, your kindness, enter the room first, and that be demonstrated through your compassion and mercy. Thank you for all you're doing. Thank you in advance for your contributions to this great event. Thank you, Jeff. So, I know you're dying to ask me about our new grandson, Helen and I had seven weeks ago today. So I will tell you that Bodhi Chad is growing and that you're lucky I wasn't talking baby talk or breaking out on a lullaby because that's what we've been doing for the last seven weeks. So we've been really happy to have that. And grandmother over here has had a blast with this guy. So I wanna thank you for opening up your wallets and your hearts to High Country Humane. What we have accomplished within our first five years is only the beginning. 
we see a shelter that has become an integral part of our community. We commit to you that we will strive to make you proud to be associated with us. We are so fortunate to be part of this amazing community. You have had our backs from the beginning, and we will have our, your backs way into the future. We still have some food left. We have conversations I know that take place at the tables. We promised you an in and out within an hour, and I think we beat that. Liz, did you want to add anything? The only thing we didn't talk about was the, uh, the fair, the uh, change, spare change. Did we mention that one? Do you want to talk about that for one second? Yeah, this, this is another way to give, which is really an easy way to give. It's a couple of cups of coffee a, a month, but I think it, it is worthwhile to at least mention it. So please do. <laughs> How it works. Thank you again for coming. Wow. What an amazing event. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm so grateful for all of you and again for our sponsors, um, but really for just being with us, you know, on a Tuesday morning in the middle of your work week. Um, I'm really just so grateful to see all of you. Sam had mentioned a program that we did start, which is called the Roundup Program. Um, it's on our website. It's called Roundup, and it's spare change. It's one of just the unique ways to give without even thinking. So you can put a cap on that amount. It's easy to sign up online. And it's very easy to find on our website at highcountryhumane.org. And it just is, again, a fun way at the end of the day at the grocery store or some of your change can round up to this wonderful cause. So, Jeff, thank you for your time. What a touching speech about Sunday. I won't even tell you the story about my dog. I won't make it through that, <laughs> that talk. So I know we all have loving pets in our lives, you know, past, present, and hopefully future. <laughs> Um, I hope that you'll come and visit us at High Country Humane if you haven't been to the shelter yet. We're out on 89, about 10 minutes past the mall. Um, I'm there Monday through Friday from 11 to 5. Just pop in. The shelter's open seven days a week. Um, but we'd love to see you if you'd like to come and visit. If you're not sure if you want to step into an animal shelter, I understand. <laughs> You think you might be leaving with an animal, which is okay. <laughs> we have a lot of amazing events out in the community as well, though. On our website, there's an events page, and there's adoption events and tabling events, and you'll see us at a lot of community opportunities together. So I hope to see you. I'll be here. Um, you can check out if you have a sponsorship form, a, a donation form to hand in, um, or if you have any questions, we'll be here to visit. And again, please take some breakfast or have some if you haven't already. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here. Thanks again. <laughs>